Makoto Shinkai is quickly growing to the position of the top star in the anime world. He's already been named the new Miyazaki, so I tried watching Weathering with you to see how he's dealing with symbolic patterns, and I've got to tell you, a new Miyazaki he is not. It would be great if you knew the movie already, as I am not going to go through the whole plot, but if you haven't seen it, I'd highly recommend Bonsai Pop Review, the most insightful one I found. If you've seen my other videos, I'm sure you can already see a pattern of absolute perfection in the female lead character that sets the world straight in the end. It's usually not in the western fashion of replacing the male with the female looking character, as the Japanese heroines are generally quite feminine. However, Hina Amano, the weather maid, is not only perfect, but indeed serves as a Christ the Redeemer figure in the story. Well, kinda. But let's start with the rain. In the biblical setting, in the desert, rain is usually a blessing from above, something that gives life and enables growth. In Japan, however, where they have a rather severe rainy season, you have to work hard against mold and decay, or you can lose a lot of your belongings. Thus, if it rains so heavily throughout the movie, we know we are dealing with the flood scenario. I have to admit that while the horizontal symbolism of the cosmic mountain surrounded by the ocean is quite transparent to me already, the vertical splitting of water still poses some unanswered problems. But let's give it a go. It appears that the meaning coming to the earth from above can simply be utter destruction, because the hierarchy built down below is too faulty to be repaired. There is sin on earth, and the message from the above is the wages of sin is death. Just as in the ultimate story of the gospel, this story also contains a ray of hope in the character of aforementioned Hina Amano. If we check the kanji of her name, we learn that Amano means a heavenly place, and he in Hina is sunshine, yang principle from yin yang, positive, male, heaven, and the daytime. That is all the things associated with order and the masculine. And we quickly learn that this is indeed her function in the story. By praying to be able to walk in sunshine with her dying mother one more time and walking through a torii gate, she is taken up into the sky, to heaven, where she sees... Are those fish? <laughs> what we are dealing here with are the waters above from the biblical story of creation. These waters are normally kept at bay like the waters below, so that some dry space is made for humans to live in. What we've been seeing here since the beginning is constant downpouring of rain, that is, connecting the waters above and the waters below together again, mixing them. Then we meet the protagonist, a boy named Hodaka, and while Hina is associated with everything light, dry and heavenly, Hodaka comes to Tokyo across the sea, from outside, thus being the unknown novelty, a new potentiality, a foreign man. But that's just the first flip that we see in this movie. Hodaka meets Hina in McDonald's, where he is presented a free meal by her, thus getting immediately attracted to the giver. Uh, sorry, what was this? It's for you, but don't tell. Uh, but wh what for? Take it. Unless you want to have chowder for dinner again. When he meets her again, he thwarts her plan to give herself away to the Mafia willingly for the sake of earning enough to sustain her brother and herself. This is a neat foreshadowing of what is going to happen later on a much larger scale. It quickly turns out that by praying, to whom? Hina can make islands of light and dryness amidst the flood ravaging through Tokyo. And she is very happy to do so, as it gives her joy to see people experiencing sunshine again. How'd I do? That was truly amazing. You are a sunshine girl. 
<laughs> I can't believe that actually worked. One cannot help but to see Christ walking around Palestine and putting people's lives in order through his miracles performed by praying to his father. While she does it out of kindness and compassion, Horaka comes up with an idea to set up a website and offer her services to earn a few bucks. It's done! All right, I'm uploading. Everything look good? Yeah. It reminded me of the spirit of Judas, always tied fast to the earthly things and way of thinking. Yet we cannot say that Hodaka completely neglects the heavenly. It's amazing how a simple thing like the weather can affect our moods. That was when I realized for the first time just how much the human heart is connected to the sky. He is aware of indispensability of the sky, the heaven, on every level of fractal analysis, which makes the end of the movie, that I'll talk about later, even more pronounced and not accidental. The spirits follow the smoke and that's how they come back. Back from where? From heaven. There's always been another world up there in the sky. So the lady here refers to the same watery land we saw at the beginning, but she says it's a place where souls go after death, which makes me think this land should actually be considered Sheol. Together with this painting that represents whales, dragons and monsters in this sky realm, I'm beginning to be convinced that another inversion is taking place here and that these waters above are actually waters from below. We merely have been allowed to stay in this shifting space between the heavens and earth, clinging for our lives, trying our best not to be shaken off. This line confirms that this story does have a working symbolic structure and is not just a total mashup of everything. And also our place is indeed in the land between the two separated extremes. However, there's a thin thread binding us humans to the sky. And that is the weather maiden. This strengthens the claim that Hina is Christ of this story. Just as he is our bridge to heaven, she is the one binding people to the sky. This is of course proven ultimately when we hear... Just remember though. Everything comes with a price. This is no exception. A tragic fate awaits the weather maiden. And Hina soon learns about the price that needs to be paid. Her little miracles so far were just a presage of her function of opening up the sky to the people again, so that the human heart can be reconnected to it, to paraphrase Horaka's words from before. By the way, Hina, a perfect Christ that she is, is ready for the necessary sacrifice of her life. But when Hodaka learns about it, he has a real St. Peter moment. Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Let's make a promise to each other to always be together. She doesn't make that oath to him, though. At night, she is taken to the sky realm, slash water above, slash below, slash she all and sunshine finally returns to tokyo not a bad moment to end the movie huh yet there's a whole final act ahead of us as horaka simply cannot accept the loss of hina and decides to go and save her at all cost on his way to the tori he is stopped by the police but his friends help him get away this character keisuke had been trying to win back the custody over his little daughter, and such an assault on police officers obliterated his chances to win the case. If you listen to Jordan Peterson, you know that he sometimes says that good actions are good on every level of analysis. Good for you, good for your family, good for society, good for the present and the future. Good deeds, like symbols, should be fractal in their nature. Well, anyway, Horaka runs through the gate and is also teleported up in the sky. This really is more like Sheol. Horaka finds Hina and takes her with him. Up to this moment, we could try interpreting this as a type of resurrection, fulfilling the trope of Hina the Redimir. But with her coming back to Earth, the rain comes back as well. Slowly it sank Tokyo, where it remains, submerged in water. The rain's still falling. Three years later. 
the flood scenario is complete. The world remains unredeemed. All because one person's love was not sacrificial. Indeed, Hodaka never sacrificed anything either for Hina or anyone else. But most of all, he couldn't accept the sacrifice. He couldn't accept that someone could be ready to die for him. Did you know the entire area of Tokyo used to be under the sea? Look at it now. It's sort of reverted back. What this implies is that it wasn't worth it for God to separate the waters above from the waters below, creating the dry land for us, as this world is simply beyond redemption. No one deserves the sacrifice of an innocent life. It is no different from the current antinatalist trends, satanic in their nature, as their underlying axiom seems to be that humans are so wretched that they are not worthy of any sacrifice. When Hodaka and Hina are finally reunited again, accompanied by a tremendously uplifting pop song, we can see that she is still open to and willing to sacrifice as she's praying for the weather to change, but to no avail, as the rain is still falling. You know what, Hina? <laughs> We're gonna be alright. Well, I beg to differ.